But isn't syphilis like deadly? And yes, yes, and- I think El Capone died of syphilis. The FC two female condom. Sexy name, sexy name. Female condom two. I don't know what happened oh, to I've female seen- condom one. <laughs> but we, unless this is. Female condom 2.0. I mean, I don't know, but this is the name of it. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Silver and Sensational. We are just so excited to have you back here to enjoy our program. I'm Jessica Lindbergh, and with me, as always, is the reason for the season, Lois Mills. The reason for the season. Oh, do I love this. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And again, I'm uh, preparing for France, red nails and red lipstick. I mean, Lois, you, I did not feel like it was truly spring, especially being here in Chicago until I saw your shirt. You are just, you are looking so cute. I'm so jealous. Well, we finally got spring in Los Angeles. I mean, it's been 50 degrees and yesterday it was 84. (gasps) The day before was 78. The sun's shining. We, you know, it rained before, but it's, I mean, it's like, uh, it's, it's truly rebirth. Oh, it, right. When it, when it, when I, you know, this is my first time experiencing seasons too. So it's really something to come out of we it snowed here last week you I know, know what I, mean? I know and now there's da- dandelions in the grass so yeah, I'm going to tell you I can't remember what day it was uh, I cannot remember but sometime over the weekend while whenever New York was getting their earthquake right. I watched hail hitting the rooftop next to me wow I mean, Los so Angeles that's is what's having been going on here. Los Angeles is having some type of year for sure. But it anyway, is. so we are in the middle of our sex capades. Could you say? Oh, um, I like that. Yeah, but before we do that, we just want to remind you that we are also on the journey to getting twenty five hundred subscribers here on YouTube. If you would like to be the owner, the proud owner of 12 Miracle Bomb shades from Jones Road uh, Makeup Company, Bobby Brown's Makeup Company, just hit the subscribe button. Help us get to 2,500 subscribers because once we do, we will kick off our giveaway of the amazing product that is Miracle Bomb and you'll get 12 shades once you enter that giveaway. It's pretty exciting, Lois, but moving right along, it's... We, we have spent a lot of time talking about sex the last two programs. We've talked yep. about what sex is like after 50, post-menopause. We talked about it for men and women, the challenges, the benefits. Last week, we talked about sexual fantasies, when to include your partner, when you should realize them, if you should, all the kind of statistics about that. Today, we're kind of pumping the brakes yep. in, in a good way. Lois, I have to be honest, I am not a safe sex practicer often. Uh, You know, I know all the things. And I imagine our over 50 postmenopausal group thinks that, well, woo, I don't need to wear a condom anymore. So why should I? But I really hope that's not the case. Well, I'm going to tell you, um, it's been an eye opener for me, you know, I mean, Several years back, I remember hearing all of the, well, all the stories about um, the influx in, of of STDs and even in uh, nursing homes. Oh yes, because you remember yes, that. And I do was, remember that, and it was oh my god. But then you know, I'm thinking, well, things have changed a lot, and I think. Many women 50 and over, you know, may not be doing what we should be doing. So, you know, I'm going to just read a recent federal report that shocked me. And wait till you hear this. Okay. It found that cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis increased 7% from 2017 to 2021, Reaching two and a half million cases. Whoa. Syphilis infections surged 32% in one year from 2020 
to 2021. And these are just the reported cases. Now, this we're talking about silvers. This is a category. This is silvers. Just silvers. Wow. And not the 20 like- to 29 year olds. This is, um, this is people over 50. But isn't syphilis like deadly? And yes, and- yes. I think Al Capone died of syphilis. R- right. And, and like, so uh, this might be TMI, but I, I'm just sharing this because they are common. And it can happen to anybody. And I had chlamydia and I didn't know it for a full year. And and so I, what's wonderful about the world we live in now is go, you know, you go get tested, you take medication. But aren't some of these uh, sexual infections like visible? Don't you? Well, we'll get to what the symptoms are. Gotcha. But, you know, there's a lot of factors involved. And uh, one of it is, you know, people uh, of you know, again, we're going to, so I don't have to keep repeating this. We're talking about people 50 and over, 40 and over, but let's say 50 and over, because most of us haven't been educated about sexually transmitted diseases. Wait, really? No, we weren't. And and I, listen. Oh my gosh, You Lois. know, if we go back, we're talking, you know, the major uh, worry that most of us had as um, premenopausal women was getting pregnant. So once that was off the table, we felt this sense of freedom. So I'm just putting this together, and I think this is the divide between the generations yeah oh there's no question because we were educated about the and granted i'm in los angeles i'm not in some bible belt country part of you know usa who's preaching safe sex as abstinence yeah you know so you guys probably you probably did have sex education but not education about how to have sex unless it was for procreation it was, it was not, you know, first of all, we didn't have that many. I mean, what I'm about to talk about today, I had no idea even existed. Oh my goodness. So that's, this. That's even at this, at this time in my life. So. Because wow. I'm part of the pill generation. Right. So condoms weren't being used. You know, we didn't oh. use condoms. Oh, my God. Be, uh, you know, because condoms in, in my day were used not to get pregnant. Oh, Lois. And same thing with diaphragms. This was, uh, all of this was right. not. In, so you didn't get pregnant. So, you know, it was with the onset of HIV that we started talking safe sex in a very serious fashion. I mean, there was a program when I was 10 that was on my cartoon channel that educated us about safe sex with Magic Johnson putting a condom on a banana. So, like, I'm, I'm telling you, they, this was that was how much of an epidemic it was. But also, that just goes to show why maybe I'm coming in a little ignorant. That's the world I was born into. You know and what I that mean? That wasn't our world. So our this world is, was not like that. That makes this program even more important. Yes, for our yes, silver. I, I really want. I really want you out there to pull up a chair and listen to what I'm about to All tell right, you. All right, let's because, go. So you know, I just don't want people. But women really need to know that we are twice as likely as a man to contract hepatitis B, gonorrhea, or HIV even. Wow. And less likely to have symptoms. That's actually also, very scary. Also, I want to mention that it's a, it's a rare doctor that, you know, will be checking you for these kinds of things because, again, they're not thinking in terms of sexually active women Especially of a certain over. age. They're, so that's actually ageism and discrimination. 
Oh, you want to put tags on? Yeah, but hold I mean, on. It's- well, I mean, listen. There's just documented. It's documented that women aren't taken seriously by doctors as much as men are, and that mm-hmm. number increases mm-hmm. greatly if you're a woman of color. So I'm just saying, it would make sense that a doctor is not assuming that a woman of a certain age is as sexually active, which is discrimination or an assumption, or you know what I mean. So it it. it I kind of like talking in those terms so that we as women especially know how to advocate for ourselves better, to go to the doctor and say, I'd like to be tested for these things. Exactly. So, you know, I want, so again, you know, um, let's go back to, you know, a mindset, you know, so don't think just because you're with one person Mm. that this is safe because first let's, let's, let's figure that he really isn't a virgin. And so we don't know what he's bringing to the table. That's absolutely right. And, you know, we really don't know if you're truly the only one. That's such a good point too, Los. And I think this does speak especially to um, our silvers that are out there dating too. There's Absolutely. You know, you you start being more protective of yourself is what this is all about today. Gotcha. And, you know, just don't be believing that you're the only one. I hope you are. I hope he's telling you the truth. And I'm not trying to say you should be suspicious or mistrusting, but, you know, I'm sorry. Just protect yourself. And um, so lo- there's no guarantee about anything. No. and and. And I will just say, it it's not sexy asking the person you're interested in to get a, a, a test before you have sex. But it's very common for people in my generation to ask that. And I genuinely won't have sex with somebody until I have had a sex test. I am telling you, this never even occurred to me. I, but again, it, it, I was raised in this world, so it makes exactly. so much sense. Exactly. And so, you know, if, even if your partner, and again, you know, I'm talking about people who are really sexually active and um, out there, but even if he puts on a condom, you know, and even if it doesn't roll off or break or leak, you know, there's a, they usually go on after there's been a lot of skin to skin contact and, and, Condoms, male condoms, simply don't cover all the men's private parts. So just using a condom is is not not enough. enough. So how can women protect themselves, you're asking? (laughs) I am asking that in so many different ways because I'm also learning a lot. I'm going to, I mean, this is like I've, you know, this is like my awakening. Maybe I'm a, you know, I'm living in another world, but... (laughs) You know, HPV and herpes and other STIs, they live on skin and not in semen. Ah, there you go. Yes. So that's why that skin-to-skin contact. Because the bodily fluid thing was very, very uh, important when it came to like HIV. Absolutely. And so this is all we're thinking. Bodily fluid, bodily fluid, bodily fluid. Well... These STIs that can cause us major problems live on skin and wow. not in the semen. Wow. Well, I, I, while maybe logically I could have deduced this, I wasn't thinking that, <laughs> that okay. nitty gritty about it. So this is important. This is something I didn't know existed. Female condoms. Okay. Now, is it like a latex underwear? <laughs> Well, we'll get to that. Okay, okay. okay. (laughs) So, apparently, all right, there is something called the FC2 female condom. Okay. That's been approved by the- Sexy name, sexy name. FC2, female condom two. I don't know what happened to female condom one, (laughs) unless this is 
female condom 2.0. I mean, I don't know, but this is the <laughs> name of it. And it was approved by the FDA and is available in the United States. Okay. And it's available on the website in many Planned Parenthood centers. Okay, okay. Okay. No and, Walgreens yet, it doesn't sound well, like. Not over the counter, but this is what I don't understand. We have to have a prescription to buy it in a drugstore. What on earth? I don't understand this, but it at any rate, I'm I'm we're trying to find the methods for how women can protect themselves. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. So yeah, this wonderful. is one certainly one way, and this FC two condom is a is non latex. Okay. So, you know, if you're latex sensitive, it's not an issue. It's very soft and it's like a sheath that covers the cervix and vagina. Interesting. The vagina walls and also shields the outside of the vagina, vagina. So, also you so you know one size fits all and a ring on the outside prevents it from getting pushed inside during intercourse. That is interesting. Yes, but it also protects you during oral sex. Yes, then that, 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 listen. And which is also an issue to be concerned about. Oh my God, the, the, the bodily fluids from that transfer alone is, yeah, is and, almost and, scarier. And now, and, and so it's lube compatible. So, okay. you know, there we are with that and protects against STIs far better than male condoms. Okay. Now, a young friend of mine knew about this and said that it was demonstrated during uh, their sex education really? program. So she said, oh, no, I know all about that. And I'm like, I honestly, I, ladies, you know, I was, I was, wait till I tell you about the next one, which of okay. course she didn't know about either. Well. Protective panties. Okay. And they come. They're called laurels, L-O-R-A-L-S, for protection. And we don't get any, any, anything no, for any no. of this. So just so you know. We're sharing information. We're that sharing we information. We're not pushing anything. And they are, I don't know, they're FDA cleared. Now, again, I don't know the difference between approved and cleared, but you know, I went on the website, I checked them out. They fit like lingerie. They have different styles, just like, you know, when you were buying your panties. Your bikini or your... Yeah, yeah. bikini, okay. hipster, boy, boy cuts. And they block against transmission of bodily fluids. They're single use. They are latex. Okay. And they transfer every sensation and they're... Their one time wear, I will say that they can be purchased on their website. And again, that's laurels for protection. You know, you might find them pricey four pairs for $25. Pretty expensive. Now, worth it to protect yourself, but that's expensive when you can consider the price of. Con I mean, it's just not a normalized product. I, I don't know the price. You know what? I, I don't know the price of a. Uh, FC2 female condom, so I'm going to guess it's much cheaper. Sure. Uh, but these are two ways to protect yourself. Now, what you are saying or were saying about it may not be sexy, but you know, especially when you're out there dating, you you really you really should ask for a current not even recent, current test results. Listen, if there was the a guy, guy. There was a guy who was, you know, ten years my senior, and he was sexy and I liked him, and he he made sure I got a, a test before we had sex, and and he did the same. And what's what? You know, then you can have really fun, safe sex. 
you know it's just like you let's just say that you know herpes is is exists you need to be honest with your partner i know people are afraid of getting rejected when they disclose this information but you could have such better sex if you disclose these things gen- genuinely well i i i know you know i know a a few ladies who in their eagerness to have somebody in their life you know, throw caution, have thrown caution to the wind. Now, I've done that too. I have. I, I don't believe that they've they've had any real um, serious repercussions from it. But uh, you they know, might when, not disclose that. Th- exactly. Also, you know, we're just doing this as a PSA, so to speak. There we this go. This is a PSA to all of you out there. So, you know. I'm I'm planting the seed for you to go ahead and check out the things I'm talking about mm-hmm. and maybe find more of your own but um we need to we need to at least tell you um to see your physician if any of these symptoms appear okay. an unusual discharge and for men you know any drip or oozing you know you should get to your doctor for women you know, we're used to discharge, but if it's yellow, green, or has a bad odor, that's that's a sign you should get yeah. to your doctor. Yeah. You know, if you have any bumps or sores near your genitals, even if they go away on their own, get into the doctor and have get some testing. Yeah, I do not love the contingency of people are like, oh, it went away. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This is something that you should get into the doctor to get some That's testing right. for. Um, and we're all accustomed, you know, to burning with urination. You know, a lot of us have gone through UTIs. This oh. is something that, again, you know, see your doctor about. Right. Any pain or irritation. Um of course, any vaginal bleeding and itching or irritation. So, you know, if you're, especially if, you know, regardless, but if you're sexually, if you're uh, active, you know, don't be taking any chances. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's, you don't want to, you don't want to have to call people you've had sex with to say, hi, you know, it reminds me of a sex in a city. Sex in the City episode. Oh my God! Remember, yes. <laughs> when she when she got chlamydia. Um, oh gosh, the redhead, the redhead attorney. Yes, yes, Miranda. Miranda, when Miranda had to call all of her sex partners, <gasps> and you know, I mean, really, you've got you know, you have a list this long. I don't care if your list is two or three people. You aren't going to want to make that phone call, Lois. I have. And it is not fun. And, you know, the adult, the adult person, the mature person will take that information in stride. But it is not great. It's not great at all. Absolutely not. Absolutely uh, so not. So I think the moral of the story is um, good for you. You can't get pregnant. But please, dear God, protect yourself. And I, and I really just want to stress um, how how much can be sidestepped of the things we talked about today with communication, earnesty, honesty, and and like a willingness to get tested. I, ge- I gen like I would walk around with papers. I would I would become a regular at my my local Planned Parenthood, pull up the test, and ask my partner to do the same. So. Because this doesn't sound like fun, and and genuinely, I love that that some people are trying to solve the problem of the male condom not doing the trick with protecting from STIs. So I, it's, I really didn't know that. I honestly don't think I put that together I either. Really did not know that. Um, you know, I don't care what kind of sex you're having; you're going to have skin to skin contact. That's just and that's what it where is. The STIs come out. So, and, but like, the, I guess my point is, is like, if you're, if you're like me listening to you describe the FC2, it doesn't sound sexy. However, sex is so much more just than the physical act. So either protect yourself, get a test, 
communicate, get the female condom, you know, do the things you need to do. Yeah. You know, you want to, you want to put a name on it, call it the Trojan S. I don't care what you call it. I call it Helen. (laughs) The Helen. The Helen. I, you know, it, it's, it's just, we've, we were hoping that this really hits home with you. It's the last of our Sexy time talks. Sexscape talks. <laughs> Jessica, should we go on to say what we're going to be doing next? Well, I think since your journey of France, should I, shouldn't I, is coming more to uh, fruition, I really want to follow you on that journey, Lois. So we're going to just really start putting the focus on what you're going through. Yeah. And the trials and tribulations, your emotions. And so we're going to be just looking through Lois's lens of, of the move, if it's happening, if it isn't. Um, and I, we really encourage you all to stick with us while we're doing this with Lois. Cause there's also some fun stuff that we're going to plan for September, maybe some uh, review stuff. But right now I just want to know what Lo is going through. Well, you know, one of the things is Regardless if you're uh, you're thinking you're never going to leave where you are now, uh, some of the some of the things that I am going through affect all of us um, at a certain point in our life, and um, you know I want to share with you how I am maneuvering through it and uh, how. There are people who are there to help me through it. And at any rate, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So I think that's wonderful, Lois, because just to share just a little bit too, I didn't expect that I would have to leave my hometown and I left for a good reason, but it was also financially based, you know? So life life comes at you quick, to quote Matthew Broderick from (laughs) uh, Ferris Bueller, and if you blink, you might miss it. So sometimes just things happen. And That's you've right. got to make choices. So I'm so excited to follow you on this journey. Folks, if you have enjoyed this program, make sure you reach out to us. Let us know what you're looking forward to hear about our show. You can find us on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook at Silver and Sensational. You can also email us at silverandsensational at gmail.com. If you have any advice for Lois looking into going to France, we'd love to hear it. And oh, Lois, sure. if our friends are watching us on YouTube, what should they be doing? Well, if you haven't, already, please do subscribe and leave us some comments in the box below and hit like and my goodness, share us with your friends and even people who aren't friends, but do share us and press the little notification bell and it'll it'll let you know and remind you that we drop a new episode every Friday. Thanks to the good work of our wonderful co-host and producer and one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, our Jessica, which all of you always write in and tell me how much you love this child. Oh, my ego. (laughs) My ego. Yes, yes. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Remember that we've got this wonderful program going, so subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Jessica, thank you. And I look forward to being with you and sharing my journey. I'm looking forward to it too, Lois. I'll see you next week. You bet. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching us today. And please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, We love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode.